Welcome back to Croquet in the Desert. You know where we are by now, so we'll cut to the chase. This is the 2022 USCA National Championships. American Rules Croquet coming from the Mission Hills Country Club in Rancho Mirage, California. Your tournament director on site is Rich Curtis. I think Jeff Sue may have set up the player pairings ahead of time before he went to Australia to play in the McGraw. I'm designating Nick Gray as the tournament manager because he and Donna Dixon were very helpful in securing accommodations for Brian Hovis, your videographer, who's also responsible for these lovely drone shots. We are, of course, now the official YouTube channel of the United States Croquet Association. You can get everything you want to know about croquet from the USCA. So check it out and think about joining this wonderful community of ours. In addition to the USCA, we're very grateful for sponsorship from Chris Barley and Stuart Price that lets us do things like fly Brian Hovis to Mission Hills and get extra games. All the matches in this double elimination event have been single games until now. The final is the best two out of three. All the bracket information comes from CrowCaseCores.com run by Tim Murphy in Australia who is more than deserving of any donations because this platform is absolutely critical to keeping the croquet community informed about tournaments around the world. He covers golf croquet, AC croquet, and the addition of American Six Wicket in the last couple of years has been immensely useful to me. This is what it looks like courtside, and the scenery can take the sting out of losing to a certain extent. In a bit of a departure out of respect for concern about privacy and social media, we're just going to be calling ball colors today. These two split the first two games, 26 to four, and then 26 to three the other way. So befitting a national championship, we get a third game tiebreaker. He put blue in corner four in turn one in game two and won 26 to three. So let's try it again. I have never seen that maneuver work so well before. Not only did he rob him of his continuation shot, he put him down there as a pioneer at hoop two for his own red ball. I didn't see him check, but if black can see blue, he could put red in wired position from black on the other side of the hoop and have a better hoop shot than he has here.
I wouldn't call that a mistake. It's just one of those weird things that happens in American rules. It doesn't plague AC players. But mistake or not, it can be costly. Great opportunity to hammer this down to hoop two and pick up red and do a croquet out to black. Except, of course, that red is dead on black.
that black pioneer we're a little bit closer to two back you might put yellow where he can get a rush to corner one and try to pick up blue before he makes two back but actually i haven't seen anybody do that usually they do what he's doing which is play for the rush toward three back and then pick up blue after two back Decent start, seven hoops, six point lead. Three ball dead, but he's in the jaws of his hoop. Center ball from 60 feet. Unfortunately, it's the second shot in a row that would have started a break in AC, but is turn-ending in American rules. I think it was Oscar Wilde who said, no good deed goes unpunished. Sometimes I get the feeling that American rules were written by Victorian Englishmen to make Americans suffer. But of course, they were written by Americans. My first thought here was send black down to four back, go put blue far away and give the break back to red, but he doesn't want to give blue a chance to mess things up.
His mallet is a round trimmer, 12 inch head, with a 42 inch shaft. That and his fluid style remind me of James D., the talented English player who won the British Open a year or two ago. They both play with a very upright stance and a sense of motion and lack of hesitation. We all drill into beginners that they have to stalk the line of the shot they want to take. And a lot of good players do that compulsively, but others don't, as you're seeing here. Matthew Essig, Sharif, to maintain the flow of their game when they're running a break, they carefully get up behind the ball and set their stance, but they don't take a break in the action to get back 10 or 15 feet and do a lot of stalking. I would certainly not suggest that a beginner try to do it this way, but your game can evolve. He sent blue as a pioneer to six, and it went way too far, so he's going to double load six. Here comes John Ritchie's one-third plus one idea. Put black the pivot ball a third of the way toward three back and the yard toward two back so you can position a red pioneer at three back and get a nice rush to two back. I'll bet he doesn't even know that's a thing, but he's doing it instinctively the way most players do.
when he did that, moved yellow on the other side so he could kit black out to the west, I would have bet $100 he was going to leave blue to the right of two backs so he could come back and get black after he makes two backs. Whoa, he tries to collect on that bet. Tell him I'm out. Red's for four back, and he's going to need black for that leave. He's going to earn some frequent flyer miles setting that one up. You call a timeout to think about this one. There are at least three effects from having left black behind like that after two bag. One, he had to run a three ball break for two or three hoops. Two, he has to do this. He has to go get it. And three, he ends up taking longer row K's than he really ought to around hoops. He's getting away with it, but I bet he won't do it that way again.
Oh, yeah, and the fourth effect, it made the leave harder. He's going to have trouble avoiding being last out on partner. Probably doesn't really care that much because his partner won't have very far to go if he gets the leave set. A rush on black to four back would have been a lot better because then he could have fine-tuned it after he got down there. This way he has to leave it where it is. Red and yellow will be nicely positioned on the boundary, but it doesn't really matter because... Black is giving Blue a wide open shot and he's so far off the boundary it could easily be successful. Games are lost because of the position of Black. There's the state of the game when this break started after Yellow got knocked out of bounds up by hoop three. Was able to clear partner red of his three ball deadness by forcibly clearing it through three back. And then took the break from hoop two to the peg. He did get last dead on partner, but blue and black had no deadness to clear when he made one back. This may be the last chance to stop this bullet train. They don't care who wins. They just wanted to see more croquet.
as much as I like to see former national champions do it again, it's new national champions that keep the pot boiling. 26 to 3 in game 3. A brand new national champion for 2022. So that's all from the Nationals in Mission Hills 2022, and now for a very special and very short ceremony. Coming in second place twice in the last three years, I think, Paul and Gary Bennett, the Bennett brothers. Gary Bennett with his brother Paul got second place in championship flight doubles, and Gary actually won first flight singles in the U.S. Open, the AC tournament held the week before here at Mission Hills. So sadly, Gary passed away shoveling snow in Louisville, of all places, two days before Christmas. His t-shirt, nope, not today, reflects his wry sense of humor. He was beloved by everybody. And from the croquet community, our heartfelt condolences to his wife Margie, his brother Paul, and the rest of the family. Tiny consolation, but at least he got to go out on a croquet high. <laughs>